Beloved brothers and respected sisters, we continue where we left where we left on the previous Jumu'ah, the wise teachings of Luqman salam. And as we mentioned in the previous Jumu'ah, this was an individual that was humiliated by his people, disrespected by his community members due to two things. Point number one, his financial status. He was not a wealthy person. He was not amongst the elite. He had nothing. And we spoke about that in the previous Jumu'ah. Also, point number two, the reason why this individual was judged. So he was not judged by his character. He was not judged by the way he carries himself or the way he speaks or the way he presents himself or the way he deals with other people. He was judged by the color of his skin. He was a black individual. And because of this, brothers and sisters, he was not accepted by his people. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala honored this person and gave him the value that he deserved. And not only that, he names a chapter in the Quran by the name of Luqman. So what we value in Islam is taqwa, is piety, is righteousness. What we value in Islam is your commitment, your sacrifice, your understanding, and who you are as a human being and who you are as a Muslim. Inna akramakum indallahi We continue brothers and sisters where the first teaching that he gives his child, his son, a child that he's trying to raise, a child that he's trying to build a very strong character and a, and a very strong base of who he wants this child to be in the future. The first advice he gives his son, brothers and sisters, Ya Bunay, أَكْثِرْ مِنْ ذِكْرِ اللَّهِ فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ سُبْحَانَهُ وَتَعَالَى ذَاكِرٌ مَنْ ذَكَرَهُ Ya Bunay, أَكْثِرْ مِنْ ذِكْرِ اللَّهِ فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ ذَاكِرٌ مَنْ ذَكَرَهُ قُلُوا لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا اللَّهَ لَا إِلَهَ it says, O oh my son, remember Allah. Indeed, Allah remembers who remembers Him. SubhanAllah, the first lesson that He teaches His son, the first lesson that He conveys and wants His child to understand, remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is what will make our children and make ourselves go on a long way, brothers and sisters, where a person is constantly reminding himself of Allah's presence. Sometimes when we raise our children to fear their parents, to respect their parents only, to fear their presence, to change who they are the moment the father or the mother comes in the room, they become totally different individuals. This child could be yelling before his father or mother comes in and the moment the parent comes in, another person comes out. He begins to speak politely. You know, his actions then change. And he becomes the greatest of children because the father is there or the mother is there or a respected figure just entered the room. And subhanAllah, he is raising his child by saying, be God conscious of Allah. Remember Allah. Because these individuals, brothers and sisters, especially when it comes to our children, a day would come where they would move out. They would go into their colleges, they would go into their schools where their parents are not present. There will be nights where they would go out with their friends or sleep in their friend's house and you know, they're just mingling with people that you have no control of. And subhanAllah, if you are limiting their attachment and their fear and their respect to you as a person, this will not go a long way. So what he's teaching his child is always remember Allah. And subhanAllah, it is very difficult for a person that remembers Allah to do anything wrong. When you train your child and when you train yourself to say Bismillah before you eat, Alhamdulillah, when you finish eating, when you enter your car, you remember Allah. When you leave your house, you remember Allah. It is very difficult for this person to do wrong. And that's why dhikr is encouraged. A person, for example, that wants to or decides to steal, he will not begin in the name of Allah, Bismillah, and he will take it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's name being mentioned will make him think twice before stealing or what he want or she wants to do. If someone decides to do wrong or to commit any major sin, he will not begin by the name of Allah. And this is so important, brothers and sisters, to an extent where a person comes to the Prophet, he says, Ya Rasulullah, kathurat alayya shara'i al-Islam. The Islam has become so difficult for me. I do not know what to follow, where to begin and how to end. 
فَدُلَّنِي عَلَىٰ أَمْرُ Teach me something that I can hold on as a Muslim. Something that is simplified, something that is very easy, something that is practical, something that will take me a long way. And subhanAllah, imagine this question being presented to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. How would he answer this question? Sometimes when questions like this are presented, we're expected a complicated answer. You know, like, where should you begin? And, you know, it has to be a lecture. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam then replied in the simplest ways, in the easiest manner. He says sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, لا يزال لسان رطبا بذكر الله That make sure that your tongue is moist in Allah's remembrance. Because this would really affect a person. It would really go a long way. It would really, really hold him steadfast in school. It would always remind him of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam even says something that is greater than that. He says in one hadith, long hadith, أَلَا أَدُلُّكُمْ عَلَىٰ خَيْرِ أَعْمَالِكُمْ وَأَزْكَاهَا عِنْدَ مَلِيكِكُمْ Where shouldn't I tell you something that is one of the greatest actions and the simplest actions to reach Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَخَيْرٌ لَكُمْ مِنْ إِنْفَاقِ الذَّهَبِ وَالْفِضَّةِ وَخَيْرٌ لَكُمْ مِنْ أَنْ تَلْقَوْ عَدُوَّكُمْ فَتَضْرِبُوا عَنَاقَهُمْ وَيَضْرِبُوا عَنَاقَكُمْ The Prophet ﷺ said, and it is better than, than giving charity of gold and silver. It is better than participating in or you know, striving in the path of Allah or fighting in war. And these are all complicated things. To participate in that is difficult. To give your gold and silver and whatever you own is difficult. These are very challenging for a person. And the Prophet says, my action and what I'm going to teach you is greater than all of this. They said, what is it Ya Rasulullah? What is this action that is greater? SubhanAllah, we would think that the more you give and the more difficulty you go through, the more change will take place. And you would be more impacted by these a'mal because these are critical actions. Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, Dhikrullah, remembering Allah. Remembering Allah. It brings this sense of connection. It brings this sense of love. A person, brothers and sisters, and I speak to myself, I'm ashamed when I feel myself attached to a game, a basketball game or a football game or a soccer game or watching any series on TV or whatever a person is doing. You feel the sense of attachment that you can't wait till that clock clicks and the time comes in where I could watch TV or sit with my friends. If we have a meeting on Sunday, I can't wait to that day because everyone's gonna be present. We all could talk and discuss things. And we wait for that day. And when it comes to salah, where Allah prepares you before salah, beforehand, that there's wudu that takes place. It's a step of preparation that I must prepare towards salah. And we get rid of the ibadah. You know, our ibadah is ibadah takhallusiyya. The our worship is getting rid of the act of worship so I can feel good and move on in my day. Where our ibadah must be a sense of tranquility and love and joy and attachment, it has become an ibadah where let me get it done with and let me proceed. And that's why you find people rushing. If the iqamah is delayed one minute, everyone goes crazy. If the imam extends in his salah, everyone goes crazy. Sometimes when everyone is free. It doesn't have to be that people have to go to work. Sometimes that is the case. They do have to go back to work. But if you're doing it on a Saturday night where everyone's off, yeah, they want to go relax. But people complain of one minute delay, two minutes delay. Why? Especially when it comes to iqam. Everyone begins to look at the clock. Especially in this message, we have like three, four clocks. It's very easy to catch time. SubhanAllah, brothers and sisters, the reason why is that the sense of attachment and building this character and becoming a dhakir has not yet took place. And this is very simple, brothers and sisters. Very simple to approach and a topic that is very easily addressed. That focus on the main adhkar that was presented by the Prophet, the main remembrance that was presented by the Prophet. The Prophet ﷺ is not requesting that you go to a corner and worship Allah all day and make dhikr. That is not required. Not only that, that is condemned in Sharia. In Islam, it condemns a person that just focuses on worship. And this person is not doing the right thing and this topic must be addressed. And he needs to be approached. It's a big problem. But Islam tells you, remember Allah, especially when it comes to the blessings that He's given you. And that's why you find dhikr taking place every time a blessing
takes place. The Prophet ﷺ says, before you eat, say Bismillah. So it's very simple. This is a blessing that Allah has given me. Why not remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? After finishing eating, you say Alhamdulillah. When you get into your car, there's another dhikr. When you, go, when you enter your house, you say Bismillah. When you leave your house, so subhanAllah, as if Allah is telling you, at least remember me when you are bestowed with my mercy. And when you are living within my barakat, with my bounties and blessings, remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is the easiest form of dhikr. How can a person feel this sense of joy and happiness and he or she wake up in the morning with their children in the car and the first thing they do when they ride the car, they turn on music. And subhanAllah, everyone is just listening to all these words and different music instead of turning on 10 minutes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's remembrance. A person is still driving. A person is still going to his destination or her destination. But it is to build this, you know, this, this strong character of a person that believes in Allah and also remembers Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by involving yourself in 10 minutes of remembrance with all the ujur, just listening. Just listening to it if you have not yet memorized it. All the blessings that someone receives during the day and the help and the assistance, and we all know that only comes from Allah, can be received through 10 minutes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's remembrance. And that's when a person, brothers and sisters, that tries it, begins his day with a clear mind. And the Prophet ﷺ would always encourage a Muslim to begin with dhikr. Because it clears your mind, it pures your intellect, it purifies your intellect. You begin to think. But once the first thing we do that we pollute ourselves with pollution and everything with society has to offer, we begin our day and we're unbalanced and we're not focused, we don't know what to begin. Sometimes we go in and we're just not in the right mood. But just that sense of peace that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala puts in the heart, that helps a person, it might not solve our issues or all of our issues, but at least it provides that, you know, that peace and joy. It provides the tranquility. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ala bi dhikrillahi tatma'innu al-qulub. You know, and I don't want to stop here, brothers and sisters, where I want to stop here because the topic of dhikr goes on and on. But it is enough of an honor that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Fadkuruni adkur. That remember me and I will remember you. That is enough and an honor that someone takes that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is remembering you. That Allah is remembering you in a gathering that is greater than your gathering. So brothers and sisters, the first advice that he gave his child is planting the seed of understanding Allah's presence. That Allah is there, Allah is present, Allah is watching. And once you go through difficulty, know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is by your side. He continues in his second advice. And he says, Ya Bunay, لِتَكُنْ ذُنُوبُكَ بَيْنَ عَيْنَيْكَ وَعَمَلُكَ وَرَاءَ ظَهْرِكَ He says, Oh my son, keep your sins in front of your eyes and your good actions behind your back. SubhanAllah, what does that mean? This advice is so profound because we do the exact opposite. The exact opposite of what he taught his son. He says, when you do something bad, Keep it in front of you so you leave room for improvement. Don't forget your wrongdoings. Don't forget your sins. Don't forget how you mistreated people. Don't forget how you spoke harshly and abused people verbally. Don't forget those sins. Keep them in front of you so you leave this room for improvement. I always have to improve myself. And he says, when you do something good, throw it behind your back. Don't remember it. Don't say, I prayed yesterday. Did you read Quran? Yeah, Wallahi, I did yesterday. Did you give sadaqah? I did it yesterday. And we always record our good deeds. I remember I helped this person a year ago. How come we don't say, I remember a year ago I sinned? And if we ask ourselves, what are the sins that we committed in the previous year? We can't even count them. We cannot even count them. Not only because there's so much, it's because these are things that we don't even think about. I cannot recall my sins. But if we ask ourselves, what is the good actions that we did within the last year? The first thing that's going to come to mind, my charity that I gave in Ramadan. And my family members that I gave sadaqat. And I gave to this country and that country that are going through difficult times. 
So he's teaching his son that you as a Muslim and you as a believer must move on in your daily life and every day is a new day. أنا يوم جديد وعلى عملك شهيد فاغتنمني فإني لا أعود إلى يوم القيامة That I am a new day as a day, you know, as the sun rises. I am a new day and I am a witness for your actions. So work because I will not return to the day of judgment. So every day, brothers and sisters, we must keep in mind that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants me to improve today. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants something new. And this is the reason why we're so behind, brothers and sisters, is that when you speak some, you know, to many of our Muslim brothers and sisters, they always remember the days of Spain. Yes, that was a legacy that people left behind. But we did not participate in that le legacy. We just speak about it. Oh, remember the Muslims of Spain. We ruled 800 years. Allahu Akbar. Good for you, but we committed more crimes for all the, the next 100 years. We committed more crimes than the 800 years. So sometimes our bad and our actions is... Speak, it speaks for itself. So brothers and sisters, we continue to produce, we continue to work. Every day is a new day. How can I bring something new to the table? How can I come up with better actions? How can I come up and become a better person to society, to my family members, to my loved ones, and improve my a'mal? So anything that is good that takes place, put it behind your back as if it never took place and ask Allah for acceptance. And any time you do something wrong, Keep it in front of you. He teaches us how to deal with this mistake or what we do wrong. And inshallah, I will mention in the, come, in the second khutbah, قُولُ قَوْلِ هَذَا وَاسْتَغْفِرُ اللَّهُ وَلَكُمْ فَاسْتَغْفِرُ فَيَفْرَزَ الْمُسْتَقِرُ الحمد لله وكفى والصلاة والسلام على النبي المصطفى محمد صلى الله عليه وعلى آله الطاهرين وبعد. He says, when speaking about the sin, so he says, keep the sin in front of you and keep your righteous deeds behind you. And then he says after that, وَفِرَّ مِن ذُنُوبِكَ وَفِرَّ مِن ذُنُوبِكَ And run away from your sin. SubhanAllah brothers and sisters, we speak sometimes to our children, to our youth, to us as people, everyone. Everyone is included and I'm the first one. We speak about coming or overcoming certain sins. That how can I overcome this sin? How can I improve myself? And subhanAllah, he addresses this in a very simple word. He says, وَفِرْ مِنْ ذُنُوبِكَ That run away from your sin. The only way that we can overcome our sins and improve ourselves is to fight the source of that sin. SubhanAllah, that source or the source of that sin sometimes could be in public gatherings. Sometimes what leads to that sin is when I go out with my friends. Sometimes what leads to that sin is when I go to a certain place or when I participate in this gathering or that gathering. Sometimes the sin is in the midst of darkness where I'm alone and no one is watching. Sometimes when it's in my room and the doors are closed, sometimes and sometimes there's different ways of addressing this topic, especially when it comes fighting the source of that sin. And so this is the only way of overcoming that sin. There is no other way but looking for the source and attacking the source and overcoming that challenge. And if that doesn't take place, a person will continue to do wrong. And subhanAllah, this is where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also says, فَفِرُّوا إِلَى اللَّهِ Run towards Him. Why does He say run towards Him? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not telling you to walk away from the sin. He's saying run away from the sin to Allah. It is not a walking process because in the midst as you're walking to Allah, there are people that will always snatch you back. Shayateen al-ins are worse than shayateen al-jinn. The devils of ants of human being are worse than the devils of jinn. People that would say one thing and just drag you back to your sin. So Allah says, run towards him. Don't look back. There's no way for hesitation. There's no way for looking right and left. A person runs right away towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. فَهُوَ الْمَلْجَ He is the only one that you run towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He says, وَفِرْ مِن ذُنُوبِكَ وَلَا تَسْتَكْثِرْ مِنْ عَمَلِكَ and do not over-exaggerate your good actions. SubhanAllah, Ibn Umar used to say, I hope, I hope that Allah will accept my sincere prayers. Sometimes we finish our prayer and we walk out, khalas, we are so relaxed, I have completed my mission. These people would wish that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will accept the simplest of actions. 
And sometimes we over exaggerate our actions as if no one has done what we have done. We're the only ones and we're, you know, we're very special and everyone else is lost. He said, In the end, your actions and my actions and everything that we will do to the day of judgment could not repay Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the blessing of our sight. Just looking, just able to hear, just able to think, just able to walk. It is enough that we can walk out of this location safely. There is no bombs on our heads. Our families are with us. Our kids are coming back home from school. So do not think that your ibadah, that's it, it is. This is the only reason why you're receiving all the barakah because your ibadah is so much. So don't over exaggerate your ibadah. Because this is what many people do. They over exaggerate one Ramadan where they continue to lack on their ibadah to the next Ramadan. And even though we see the lackness in our Ramadan, it is so weak. But we still carry that to the next Ramadan that I think I did enough for one whole month. So to repeat everything again, and inshallah we will end our khutbah, is that a person, brothers and sisters, must try his best to remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as much as he or she can. And the best ways to do that is to just remember the blessings that Allah has given you. And every time you receive a blessing, remember Him. And as you're in your car in, your mor in the morning, turn on the morning and evening remembrance du'as with a beautiful voice and involve yourself in beautiful remembrance, something that doesn't take any time because you're driving regardless. Instead of listening to the radio and the news a million times, listen to the car. And also brothers and sisters, when we do something good, we put it behind our back and we ask Allah for acceptance. And when we do something wrong, we must remind ourselves that I have to overcome this challenge and we must fight the source of our sinning in our false doings and of course we should not over exaggerate our actions we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us among the people that remember him we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive our sins we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for acceptance ameen allahumma ameen